Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Pine Hills Community Church. Good morning, those who are viewing from their homes. It is an honor and a privilege just to be alive, just to say good morning to you and to come to worship God together. We invite each and every single one of you to just join in with worship however you choose to do that on today. We're so glad and excited that you would choose uh, Pine Hills Community Church to join in with. The word of the Lord in Psalm 66, verse 1 through 4 says, Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Father, we come before you this morning, first of all, thanking you for yet another day you've allowed us to see that we've never seen before. And Father, right now in this moment, we relinquish any and everything that would hinder us from being able to worship freely. Father, anything that's been troubling us, we give it over to you at this time. Lord, we just thank you for an outpouring of your presence. We thank you for an outpouring of your anointing. Lord, thank you that you will heal, that you will save, that you will deliver today as you promised to do, that you would save the souls of the lost, oh God, by this time of us gathering. Lord, we give you the glory and we give you the honor. We say thank you for being such a great God. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for holding us. And most importantly, Father, thank you for just being God in the things we didn't even realize we needed and you provided it to, the, to us. For that we say thank you. And so now, Lord, we will lift up a praise to you that says we're grateful. Now, Lord, we will give you honor. We will give you praise as you have instructed us to do. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. We thank you that the word of the Lord that will be declared in this house will be a rhema word. That you, God, will get the glory out of everything that takes place on today. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody put your hands together and say amen. Give God glory right there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God. This song we're going to sing, it just says, I will bless thee, O Lord. It's a familiar song. And you can join in with us right here in the room, or you can join in in your home where you may be. Hallelujah. We give you glory, God. Hallelujah. Put your hands on it just like this.
We're so grateful for how you keep blessing us, Jesus. And this is why we have a grateful heart. Yeah. Oh, I will bless thee, oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this next song talks about being free. And so do we have anybody in the house that's free in your spirit, free to praise, free to worship? You'll be able yeah, to join yeah, in yeah, your yeah. home and sing this song with us. Hallelujah. It's a real familiar song. Clap a little louder than before. Oh, I want to sing a little louder than before. Oh, I want to jump a little higher than before. Oh, somebody shout higher than before.
shout I am free come on I need y'all to prophetically do this come on no more shackles no more chain come on do it with me no more bondage I am free hallelujah 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 no more shackles Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them no more chains over you. Come on, tell them you are free today. Hallelujah. Whom the Son set free, you are free indeed. Come on. Hallelujah. You are to bless God that you are free today. We're free to lift our hands. I'm free to worship. I'm free to dance. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise one more time. And you may have your seats. We thank you so much, those who are watching us on today. Hallelujah. Those who are watching us on today, thank you so much for tuning in. Amen. Amen. It is good to be in the land of the living and good to see every last one of you this morning. Amen. Amen. What I want to do, I want to get right into the word. I hope that's okay. Um, if you can, I, to I know I told you to sit down, but come on, let's stand to our feet. Um, and I want you to go back to Genesis chapter 3. I want you to go back to Genesis chapter 3. I know last week, last Sunday, I believe, couples went out we had a good time and just sat and ate some good food and I wanted to um, because last Sunday the national calendar it was lovers day and so which caused me to go back into dealing with couples dealing with relationships and um I want you to go back to Genesis 3. This is good. If you are, if there's somebody um, that you know that's in a relationship, text them and tell them to go on Pine Hills Community Church page. Um, I want to help somebody today. I need your help. It's uh, Genesis chapter 3. If you know somebody that's in a relationship, if you are... Uh, 
please go ahead and text them. Tell them to tune in. If they can't tune in, tell them, hey, I'll get you the message. I believe this is going to be good. Um, I'm trying to see where I want to start from. If you look at verse... Let's look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. And I'm going to read from the easy read version, church. Yours may say something different. I'm reading from the easy read version. The Bible records, verse 7, Then it was as if their eyes opened. They saw things differently. They saw that they were naked, so they got some fig leaves, sewed them together, and wore them for clothes. I want to talk from the subject title, Shame. Shame. Lord, be with us today. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Remove me, and you speak loud and clear to your people. God, let me release with clarity my prayers that in my study time, Father God, that I give them what you gave me, and that it may fall on good ground, that they may take it and study for themselves. Let it challenge us. Let it continue to help us to be better representatives of the kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may have your seats. One of the things that I've always said that when we get married, um, there's some words that we say, hey, for better or for worse, for richer or for poor. And here we have Adam and we have this woman, her name is Eve. At this particular time right now where we are, Eve doesn't even have a name. She's really, if you look at those verses before that, it's, it's kind of like they're mentioning female. You know, the Bible said he made male and female. Another, another uh, part before Genesis chapter 3, he called her woman. So he takes a woman from a male. He takes, a, he, he takes the woman from a male. He calls her woman. And it is not until Genesis chapter 3, down in chapter 3, that her name has now been mentioned and she get her identity, which is Eve. But let's back up a little bit. Here it is. Adam and Eve are in a place where they sin. And I told you last week, I told you last week, you can bring it down, sir, and that's good, good. Um, I told you last week that Adam in chapter 2, he was told what to do with the garden that he was in. And the Bible declares that he said, listen, you can have all of this in the garden, but this particular tree you cannot touch. And so here it is, Adam disobeys. But it is in chapter 3 that Eve get deceived. It is in chapter 3 that Eve get deceived while Adam is standing there watching her, and he's not saying anything, and the snake is talking. Okay. The serpent is talking. And one of the things that the serpent is trying to do is trying to change up the way that Eve is seeing where she is. So what happened is Eve takes up the fruit. Then next thing you know, she gives it to her husband. And then they both, of course, get caught up and they sin. One disobeyed while the other was deceived. 
one disobeyed while the other was deceived. In verse 7, we see consequently what happens to Adam and Eve. Verse 7 says, then it was if their eyes opened. Which means now they saw differently. And they saw that they were naked. And what they did was they got some fig leaves. They got some fig leaves. Okay. When they got this particular, they ate of this fruit, of course, this was a fruit which was the knowledge of good and evil. And here it is, the knowledge of good and evil does not reveal, um, how would I say this? The knowledge of good and evil reveals that they are naked. And here it is, church, what, you, what they now know is not what God wanted for them. If I can metaphorically speak to you today, Adam and Eve, fashion, attire, wardrobe, was not St. John. It was not Gucci. It was not Louis Vuitton. It was not Perry Ellis. It was called figs. And I want to tell you, church, that figs are not seasonal in the body of Christ. Figs have become the old and new trend in the body of Christ. It has not went out of style. Matter of fact, unbelievers can wear it. And believers can wear it. It's a clothing attire that does not cost you anything except the cost of your life happiness. We all wore it at some point. And we wore it for a while. Figs has a collection of different clothes, and one of it's called, listen to me, church, shame. Somebody say shame. Adam and Eve was the first to wear it. And they wore it because disobedience and deception invited them to a place that required this attire. We all know that when you go into a party, one of the things that we want to ask, what do we supposed to wear? Is it grown and sexy? Is this more of a spring? Do I should I wear a spring dress? Should I wear how should I? What should I wear? Should I wear some some sneakers? Should I wear a button-up shirt? How should I wear ladies? Don't y'all look at y'all, y'all know good and well. Y'all want to know what attire should you have on? It is. Figs was not really for covering, but it was what they could do at the moment. The figs were not there to be closed. But as soon as they made a decision, watch this, and they sinned, the first thing that they can find was fig leaves. Okay, first thing they can find is fig leaves. And when we are shamed, church, we tend to look at the nearest cover-up. Shame here did not push them to lie, but it did push them to hide. As soon as God perused the ground, watch this, the Bible records in Genesis chapter 3 that, 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 that God began to walk in the garden, in the cool of the day. And as he's walking in the garden in the cool of the day, watch this, Adam and Eve, I'm in the text, y'all, chapter 3, they suddenly hid. And here is the question for us all, can God take a walk around our very lives without us hiding? Yeah. Sometimes God have to, to just, watch this, take a walk amongst us, church, to see where we are spiritually. 
And here's what I want you to know. God can be moving, but yet you stay spiritually hiding. Yeah. The thing is, we didn't got so comfortable in church that, watch this, God can be moving in our churches, and yet we stay spiritually hiding. Where are you when God is moving? And what keeps you hiding when God is moving? Because you do know the Holy Spirit can be moving in the house and yet we still be hiding. And the reason we're hiding is because, let's be honest, we could have sinned. We could have did wrong. Adam and Eve is sitting up in here and, and, and here it is. They, God is moving amongst them and they think they can go and hide as if God don't see where they are. How do we hide Pastor Miles, I'm, I'm so glad you asked. And this is how we hide, by being in what God created, but not coming forth and acknowledging the line we crossed in it. Okay, let me say that again. How do we hide? By being in what God created, but not coming forth and acknowledging the line we crossed in it. God can literally put us in a place that's good for us, but then we cross the line. And when we cross the line, we don't come forth to say, God, you know what? I crossed it. I'm sorry. I repent. I made a mistake. I, 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 I didn't intentionally do it. Or watch this. I did intentionally do, did it. I planned it. I wanted it. I liked it. Y'all ain't going to help me preach up here. But here it is. I crossed the line. Adam and Eve is trying to hide. Adam and Eve is trying to hide. Adam and his wife have to deal with the wrong decisions they both made. And as I, as I told you last week, one disobeyed while the other was deceived. And now both of them are coming together. And look at what they're coming together to do. Hide. Y'all went together when you decided about this fruit. We was kind of sort of on a different page. Matter of fact, I don't know. I take that back. I take that back. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Maybe they wasn't on, maybe, maybe, maybe they was on the same page because Adam just standing there watching us. I might not ate it, but I'm letting you do it. Come on, y'all like, y'all know y'all got ride or dies in here. You know, and, and Lord, no, I've done some things wrong and Quan kept her mouth shut. Quan, you better be with Dodie. Come on now. She kept the mouth shut. It's your ride or die. There are women in jail today based off their husband's decision because that was his ride or die. There are men in jail today based off their wife's decisions. Why? Because they are. Don't look at Adam and Eve like that, y'all. We all got our ride or dies. I'm going to ride for you. I'll die for you. Here it is, Adam and Eve are at the place of riding and dying. Notice they are on the same page now, but the page that they are on is hiding together. And when being in shame, watch this, being in shame, this big word shame causes us to all to respond in such a way that may not be normal, but it could be extreme. When you decide to mess up or you mess up and you are embarrassed, you are shamed, you have done some things wrong, watch this. It can, if you're not careful, you will handle shame wrong and shame can go to the extreme. Dr. Bernard Golden, a psychologist, wrote in the article um, that was entitled Overcoming the Paralysis of Shame. He said this, some direct their anger outward while others focus inward. And each moment of anger directed in the manner can provide a powerful distract, distraction from experiencing shame or the feelings that may accompany it. Shame, which is like guilt and embarrassment, it involves negatively, uh, negatively judging ourselves when we believe we fail to live up to either our own standards or the standards of, of the other people. When one is shamed, there are some things we tend to experience, which is intense discomfort, feelings of inadequacy, and unworthiness, 
and a desire to hide. When you know you have done wrong, it is very easy for you to go and hide because you don't want to address what you're feeling and what you feel is bad. And so women, sometimes when we're in relationship, we ask where well, you felt bad, why did you do it again? And could it be that, watch this, I'm not excusing the man or the woman, but could it be that they are discomfortable? They are in a place where they're uncomfortable. I know you don't want to hear it. I know we don't want to like, we don't like this kind of stuff. But these are tough conversations we got to have in our relationship because could it be that sometimes what's going on in our relationships are from the mere fact we don't feel inadequate. We don't feel worthy. We don't feel comfortable. I don't feel I'm not all right. I'm, I'm not okay. And I don't know how to deal. And so as I'm talking to those who are online and as we're talking about relationships and if you're going to be together with somebody, you got to be able to handle the good and the bad. And watch this. Once again, I told you that the problem with some of us in relationship as it relates to the man, the Bible says that the man ought to leave his mother and father and go and cleave unto his wife. And I told you, some of us are leaving instead of cleaving. Some of us are not staying to help deal with our mess ups and the inadequacies and the shame because you do know before you got with them they had hang ups you know still to this day they got messes why y'all ain't gonna help me preach up in here I preach to these walls there are some people watch this we get in our relationships and we want the best and we want the sunshine day. but can I tell you that could it be the person that you married to could be jealous they could be moody they could be watch this they cuss a lot they drink a lot they lie a lot they gossip a lot they talk too much y'all ain't gonna help me I know y'all quiet it's fine but I came to help us today there are some things God will put you with people so that you handle them correctly. There are some deliverance that can take place that, watch this, that you are bold enough and strong enough to handle. That's why you are a special woman and a special man. Because nobody could put up with what you put up, oh my God, what you put up with. But thanks be unto God that you are more than a conqueror. And whatever the enemy trying to throw at you, you can stand flat-footed and say, devil, whatever you want to bring, bring it to me now because I am more, oh my God, I am the the one that can help deal with this. Look at your name and say, I can deal with this. I can. I thought I couldn't, but I can. I can deal with this. Uh, all right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Because I only got two people that's going to help me up in here. And here it is. Here it is. Um, um, Adam and Eve are ashamed. Y'all, they are embarrassed. They are in guilt. They are in a place where we done wrong. Oh, uh, we out here now. Uh, uh, Adam, what did you do? Heck, what did you do? Um, um, God got questions. Uh, where are y'all? What, what's going on here? Adam is quick to speak up. Now, you weren't speaking up when you saw her doing what she was doing. But Adam then speaks up and say, this was the woman you gave me. Y'all ain't going to say nothing up in here. He's quick to take the blame off of him and point it onto God. This is all you. You, if you wouldn't have gave me this woman, surely we wouldn't be in this situation. But here it is. God deals with Adam and Eve both. Because there are times in relationships, fellas, here's, here's what's tough for us. God don't let us off the hook. No matter how much you try to point the responsibility or point the blame to somebody else, God, I know it's tough, I know it's tight, but God don't let us off the hook. When one is shamed, there are some things we tend to experience. Once again, it's intense, dis, uh, intense discomfort, feelings of inadequacy, unworthiness, and a desire to hide. Ladies, fellas, my couple, there are going to be times when your man or your woman want to hide. There are going to be times when you both are in the same season where we both want to get away from what we did. Because 
what we did, we both made a decision to do. We both grown. And what you got to be careful of what this world trying to do is because God wants you to stay there and he wants to walk you through this season where you fix this. But the world and your girls or your fellas could be telling you to leave this. When God is telling you to address this. So when you listening to other folks tell you about what you got. You got to be careful of who's in your ear because if it ain't God, don't move. Sometimes the pain and the hurt of the other or the struggle of the other, watch this, you're there on assignment to restore them. And there are sometimes God will cause you to make the decision, watch this, you got to leave. Because as much as you're trying to fix some stuff you can't fix. Some stuff you're, that's shameful in your life is all God and you now. Some stuff you got to leave over to God. And watch this. I can love you but not be with you. And that's, I'm talking to the people in here, maybe you experienced divorce. Here it is. I don't hate you. I love you. But me and you are on a separate, we in a different place. You get uncomfortable in these, in these places, in these seasons, because watch this. You don't know where you're at. You don't know what to do. And God is, is, God is saying, be still and let me commune with you. Let me watch this, because here it is. God did not kick. Watch, I take that back. God, if you look at the chapter, look at the uh, chapter three, God does not. He does not make Adam and Eve feel worse than what they are feeling. He goes in the garden and he's walking and he wants to know, Adam and Eve, where are you? Why are you hiding? The question is coming up because the truth of the matter is God wants to commune with them both. Can I talk to you, church? God wants to talk to us. When relationships get tight, God wants to talk to us. When it gets uncomfortable, God wants to talk to us. He wants to talk to us because shame, when toxic, is a paralyzing global assessment of oneself as a person. When it is severe, it can form the lens, watch this, through which all self-evaluation is viewed. As such, such words, watch this, some words used to express this emotion of shame include feeling insecure, worthless, stupid, foolish, silly, here it is again, inadequate, or simply less than. The reason God wants to talk to you because there are so many things that will go through your head as, as you self-evaluate yourself that watch this, you will start dumbing yourself down and start making yourself be worse than what you think it is. And God is saying, no, you're not worthless. You're human. No, 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 no. I know, and watch this, it's human to be, to walk in shame. But don't let shame paralyze you because shame can get some of us to stay stuck in feeling insecure. And what sometimes relationships, when we get in relationships, they don't tell you that before I came here, I was feeling insecure. Before I got in your care, I was hurt. Before I got in your care, I was misused and abused. Before I got in your care, I have been through some stuff that have hurt me deeply. Can you deal with what I'm ashamed of? 
This is not all you. This is not all you. They used to tell me I was stupid. They used to tell me I was silly. They used to make me feel like I was less than. So when you say what you say to me, you got to watch what you say because it's not you. It's what I haven't been delivered from. And sometimes in relationships, that's the very thing we don't want to talk about. That this is not all you. There is some stuff I have not gotten delivered from. And it has stuck with me for the rest of my life. And I don't want it no more. And I don't tell, I don't know how to tell you. I don't know how to deal with this. I don't know how to address this. I don't know how to fix this. All I wanted, all I wanted to do is be gone. Is there anybody in here that there are some pains and struggles that you can just wish you can just release it and let it stay away and don't ever come back? I just want to be free free. I just want it off of my mind. I don't want to see it. I don't, I don't even much, don't give me, don't even say the, the closest word that you can find in my last season or the time, my past. I, I'm telling you, don't even say it because it reminds me of why I feel shameful, why I feel bad. Everyone experiences shame at some time, but not everyone is ruled by toxic or overwhelming shame. Some researchers suggest that shame comes about from repeatedly being told not that we did something bad, watch this church, but that we are something bad. Consequently, it can close us off from accepting any form of positive regard from others or ourselves. Which, watch this, this is the reason why some of us are hard to accept. Watch this, people who speak positive into our lives. Because you are so used to the negativity that you got in times past that it's hard for you to accept when God puts you with somebody new. Watch this, in relationship with somebody new, they are of a different mindset and it's hard for you to receive and the reason it's hard for you to receive because you won't be honest enough and say I've never been treated like this this is this is this is this is tough for me it's hard to accept that you tell me I'm beautiful it's hard for me to accept that you can tell me I can do it it's hard for me to accept it's hard for me to accept it because I was with somebody that didn't appreciate me that didn't appreciate what I gave what I did y'all ain't gonna help me preach up in here but there's a season that God is calling us to that God is putting new relationships in place he is refreshing your relationship so that watch this you know how to handle who you are with uh, we as believers must watch how we deal with those who will willfully and those who make a mistake as it relates to sin. There's going to be some relationships that watch this. It's going to be intentional sin. I know y'all don't want to hear this. There is some stuff. It's going to be a mistake. And, I di and watch this. You, they just didn't know. But I need y'all real quick because I'm in, I'm in the Bible. Let's go here real quick. This is from Bible study. I need y'all to come join Bible study. Go to Galatians chapter 6 really quick. Come on. Get there. Get there. Galatians chapter 6. Because watch this. Before you are a spouse, hopefully you are a believer. If you watch this, I want you to be a believer. I want you to be, I'm pushing it. I'm pushing believers. That means I'm pushing salvation. I want you to be saved. I want you to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want you to be led by God. I want you to be led by somebody that's bigger than you so that you can help govern yourself. Galatians chapter 6. Y'all ready? Here it is. Verse 1. Brothers, I think, I think this is verse 1. I may be wrong. Brothers and sisters, someone in your group, I'm reading from the easy read version, so mine may read differently. Brothers and sisters, someone in your group might do something wrong. You who are following the Spirit should go to the one who is sinning. Help make that person right again and do it in a gentle way. Here it is. If you got an alt, 
if there's a problem, watch this, if there's a problem amongst your brothers and they are sinning, you ought to restore them in such a way. The way is you got to be gentle. Here it is. Everybody looking at me. Because wives and husbands, those who are looking to get in relationships, you got to recognize if you are saved, when you are in this relationship, I am a believer first. I am led by the Holy Ghost that, watch this, whatever place I'm in, if this is a tight season, God, I need you to commune with me. Come and talk to me. Because if you don't talk to me, I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I need you to come and talk to me. Here it is. If, now, here it is. Now, talk to me so that I can restore um, my brother or sister in the way that you would want them to be. Which means I'm going to watch how I bring restoration amongst me and you. I'm cautious, okay? I'm cautious. I'm slow about what I'm going to say because you are special. You are, you are, you mean a lot to me and you mean a lot to God. Here it is. Somebody say be gentle. Be gentle. Watch how. Watch how you do it. Believers ought to help restore a person because our opportunity is not to scold them or to beat them up even the more. Our assignment as the body of Christ is to restore. That's whether you're in marriage. That's whether you got friendships. That's whether, watch this, even if they're unbeliever. Some of them are used to beating themselves down. But you as a believer, your assignment is to restore. Your assignment is to restore them. Your assignment is to come to them, lift their head up, and say, baby, I know you messed up. I know you want to hide. I know you are embarrassed. I know you feel guilty. I know you did it. But can I tell you something? If God was here right now, he would lift up your head to tell you to get yourself back up and try doing life again. I need somebody to tell somebody else, I am a restorer. I am a restorer. You're not going to be around me with your head down. You're not going to be around me just staying in shame or guilt. You are going to lift up your head and be who God has called you to be. I am anointed in this season to be in your life to tell you, you will not go back to what you used to be. Oh my God. You will not experience what you used to be a part of. I am anointed to deal with you. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yeah, here it is. Here it is. Ah. Uh, Gentle restoration should provide caution amongst us, which means we take, watch this, we take this opportunity with intentionality and we take it with being slow. This is important because when it comes to people who are shamed, watch this, if you don't take your time with them, those who know they did wrong may not bounce back properly. Okay. So some of us, you got to thank God that you were in the relationship you in and you got to appreciate who God put you around and in front of because here it is. If they are really called by God and if they are really anointed, anointed, they are going to position you to be back in the place where God wants you to be. Oh my God. If they are beating you down, if they don't got no nice words to say, you got to challenge God. Oh my God. If it ain't, oh my, you can't say that you're going to talk down to me and still call this God. Because we got people in the body of Christ that's calling it God when it ain't. And you're trying to figure out why there's so much tension. It's not them. It could be us. It could. It could. It could be us. It could be us. Here it is. Listen to me, church. You got to understand. Uh, some people handle 
uh, others wrong. And because they don't know how to bring restoration. And, and it, even as I'm married to my wife, there are moments I'm still learning as a husband. How do I address when I'm vulnerable or when I'm hurt? As much as I don't want to talk to you because I'm pissed. I'm sorry, mad. I'm sorry, y'all send y'all know y'all gonna send me send me, y'all gonna tell me this. I'm about to say something else. Just because I said that. When you do be pissed off. You 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 mad because watch this. What you wanna say, you don't wanna say, but you got to say because this is your healing. So we go to bed mad because watch this we didn't release and some of us release but the other didn't accept God sits with Adam and Eve and he asks the question so that they may answer where are you why is he asking the question because I want you to talk back to me Watch the principle. I'm talking to you and I'm asking you a question because I want you to talk back to me. I want you to release your thoughts as to why you just did what you did. Why are you hiding? Because this could be a sign of what the rest of the world is going to be like, Adam and Eve, that when they mess up, everybody is going to go to hiding. Instead of you stepping back up and accepting this commune with me and also here's something that's tough be ready for the consequences because every decision has consequences I know we don't like it I know we want the good side of Jesus I know we want the loving side of Jesus but that same God that loves us the Bible says he's a jealous God. He don't like you to put nothing in front of him. He don't care whether it's a person or it's an emotion. I want everything out the way because when I'm dealing with you and I got you in the season that I created to bless your life, I can't allow anything to get between what I am blessing. So Adam and Eve, come out from hiding. Come out, y'all. I need somebody to shout, come out. You come out, and when, when you in it, when you, and that's why us in relationships, y'all excuse me, I'm talking to my married couples. You got to walk, go in the spirit, and you got, when you go into your prayer closet, you got to say, come out. You got to come out. You're not going to be around me and be uptight. You're not going to be around me and carry this guilt. You're not going to be around me and be shamed. I am anointed and able to handle what's coming against you. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, some people are sensitive as it relates to shame. And one, 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 uh, one um, psychologist, he's, he gives this example. He says, there's one four-year-old who accidentally spills milk. Um, he is told by his compassionate parent, that's an accident. And the compassionate compa uh, parent goes on to say, we're all, we all cause accidents. We're human and it's not always perfect. Um, let's clean this up together. And here it is. And the next time, what we'll do is we'll just try to be more careful. But on the uh, contrast, there's another parent that's with their child. And the child makes this same spilled milk issue. And here it is. She calls him clumsy. She says, you do this all the time. You just don't pay attention. And here's the difference from people who know how to deal with shame. One reaction labels the specific behavior, while the other reaction labels the child as a whole. You not talking about, watch this, you're telling the person that they're clumsy. You're not saying, now that was a little clumsy, that was messy, but we're going to clean it up. 
So when you're used to, watch this, when you're used to labeling not the behavior, but you're labeling them, it's hard for them to receive from you because watch this, you always make me feel like I'm stupid. Or you always tell me that I'm dumb, but you want to have sex. Ha, oh, Pastor Miles, why are you talking about this on a Sunday morning? How did God handle Adam and Eve's shame? He communes with them. Number two, he gives them the consequences, yet he restores them. And can I tell you that when you look at the Bible, when you look at what God, the consequences that gave that that he gave to them, I need you to go back to Genesis chapter three. I need you to go back to Genesis chapter three and we are done. I need you to go back to Genesis chapter three because I want you to know that I'm in the text. Let's go back to Genesis chapter three. Let's look at what God, let's be reminded what God did when it came down to Adam and Eve. First of all, he addresses the snake. Somebody say snake. It is. Easy to read version. This is what my version says. You did this very bad thing. So bad things will happen to you. It will be worse for you than any other animal. You must crawl on your belly and eat the dust all the days of your life. I will make you and the woman enemies to each other. Your children and her children uh, will be enemies. Oh, my God. You will bite her child's foot, but he will crush your head. Wait a minute. Let, wait a minute, y'all. Go back to verse 15. Listen to this, women. I will make you and the enemies, what, make you, uh, make the snake, watch this, your enemy which means you won't be accepted to talk to him. Here it is. I'm not going to like you, and you ain't going to like me. Women, that's why some of y'all, are when it comes down to spiritual warfare, you don't play. Because you don't like the enemy because you know what the enemy can do. You're sensitive in the spirit. Here it is. Your children and her children will be enemies. Here it is. You will bite her child's foot. But he, but he, but he, wait a minute. He was talking to she. Look at where the man steps up. He will crush your head. Here it is. Ladies, you don't got to fight. Because your man going to have to step up. You're going to want, you watch this, the enemy is going to want some action, the Satan going to want some action, and here it is, you're not going to like him, but, the, but watch this, when you got a man of God, watch this, he's going to step up. Somebody say step up. Here it is, verse 16, then God said to the woman, I will cause you to have much trouble. And when you are pregnant, and when you give birth to children, here it is, you will have much pain. You will want your husband very much, but he will rule over you. Look at me, church. This particular, he, what he's saying is, ladies, you might not, you get ready for this. Y'all ready? Ladies, y'all ready? This means you're going to want his authority. So when he has to make a decision and he say this is what it is, there are some women that can't handle that, Twanya. Because watch this, in the past relationship, there were men who misused authority. They don't, they don't really know, watch this, what godly authority is. Godly authority is not a controlling spirit. Authority is a responsible spirit. I'm not trying to control, but I am held responsible. So you got some men that don't know how to really operate in a ruling. Fellas, that's where we got to be honest. That I've learned everything else, but I don't know how to be a ruler in my house. Baby, I'm not trying to control you, but I am responsible for what's going on here. I love you. I appreciate you, but I'm responsible for you. 
ladies, you might not like this because you're used to probably being the boss. You're used to calling shots. But God, if you're going to have a godly marriage, there's some shots you can't call. Y'all say amen, please. Don't make me feel bad. Some people stay single because they don't know their role. God speaks to Eve and say, listen, you're going to want, you're going to desire what he carries. You're going to, you're, you're going to, you're going to watch this. You're going to, you're going to come against him, but he will rule over you. Then God said to the man, I command you not to eat from the tree but you listen to your wife and, 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 and you ate and ate from it so I will curse the ground because of you here it is I will curse the ground because of you did he curse man no he cursed the ground which means though you sinned though you messed up God was not trying to curse you or stop blessings Watch this, from, or stop you from walking and being blessed. He gave you some consequences. Watch this, that now you're going to be blessed, but you're going to have a hard time being blessed. It used to come easy, but now it's not going to come easy. You're going to have to sweat to, be a, uh, to walk in blessing. You're going to have to work really hard to, be, to walk in blessing. Why? Because you made a decision to do something wrong. Bible clearly says you will work hard, verse 19, for your food until your face is covered with sweat. You will work hard until the day you die, and then you will become dust. I use dust to make you, and when you die, you will become dust again. Verse 20, Adam named his wife Eve, and he gave her, uh, her, her this name because Eve would be the mother of everyone who ever lived. Verse 21, the Lord God used animal skins and made some clothes for the man and his wife. Then he put the clothes on them. Listen to me, church. I read this, and this I'm done. I'm done. <sighs> when Adam and Eve messed up, they found the very closest thing to them, which was fig leaves. Now we're in a place where here's what God needs you to see. Some of us, when we sin, we go to the nearest thing to cover us up. But when you look at this particular verse, the Bible says that God, watch this, God, God made, verse 21, look at verse 21. Then the Lord God used animal skins and made some clothes for them. Wait a minute, my fig leaves are not enough? What I put on me is not enough? Here it is, and I can't go back to being naked? God don't want you to be, here it is, God approves of the mere fact, nah, I don't want you to be naked, but if you're going to put on some clothes, I'm not going to let you put on what you want to put on. What I want to put on you, watch this, is something that has to die. And I want to cover you, which is, that's why the Bible speaks about putting on his righteousness. Because what you tried to put on was what you thought could work. And God is saying, no, in the kingdom, I don't need you to put on what you want to put on because the reason why you're trying to put on it on is because you're trying to find any little thing that can work. But when you're operating in God, he's not giving you, oh, any little thing. He is literally giving you something that has to die so that you can put this on because what I'm trying to tell you is what I'm putting on you is what has to be on the inside of you. Something has to die on the inside. The reason Adam and Eve had to put on the fig leaves was because, watch this, what was really on the inside was the shame, was the guilt. So what's on the inside, you putting it on on the outside. You finding anything to help fix your problem. And God is saying, no, don't you put on these fig leaves. Let me clothe you with my righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness. It's watch this. 
righteousness is being in the right position God's way. So church, everybody stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. I'm, um, lately, man, I, uh, yes, yesterday morning I woke up and, um, I did 5.45 a.m. prayer and I called out every last one of our church members' name. And no, I did not call and send an email out to everybody. Um, My prayer is that God restore our church so much so, and it's not about the building. It's about you. Because we're coming to church, and we want a building to be restored when we're not. And the church, this building, is only going to be what's in you. Because there are pastors that care about your money. And they care about all the stuff that you can bring. But can I tell you, this little old black man with these glasses, I don't care about what you got in your bank account. What I care about is your spirit, man. What I care about is are we right on the inside? When was the last time somebody asked you how you're feeling? What's going on with you? When was the last time somebody said, did you go to a, a psychiatrist? Have you been to counseling? When was the last time somebody told you that I'm praying for you? Are you okay? Are you okay mentally? Are you okay in your heart? When was the last time you had somebody step aside and to pray with you and be for real that they want to see you grow? They want to see you be blessed? They want to see you do great exploits and they're not trying to get in your business and trying to throw shade and really not for you i came to tell you here at this church you got a pastor that want to see you blessed for real it is not your materials it is your inside it's your inside and today my push and my prayer is that we go home and we, a and we ask ourselves, what are we ashamed of? Why do you keep thinking like this? What hurt you so bad that make you do what you do? What, what, watch this, if we're married in here, what's stopping us from communicating with each other? and stopping us from communicating with God because the power, the deliverance really is is when you grab your spouse's hand and you go to God in prayer and you're not praying in silence. You're praying so that they can hear and you're praying that God can hear because watch this, you ain't going to be around me and not be free. You're not going to be around me and not walk in blessing. Yes, we may have some consequences, but we are going to bounce back and we're going to live to the best of our ability. I love you and there is nothing that you can do about it. I may be crazy, but I love you. I may say the wrong things, but I love you. I may do the wrong things, but I love you. I want the best for you. If you married in here, look at your, uh, your, your spouse right now and tell them, I want the best for you. I want the best for you. You gonna, No, y'all ain't talking to them. Tell them, I want you to have the best. I want you to be the best you can ever be. I'm going to be here to see it. So today, today, those who are watching me online, oh God, those who are watching me online and those who are in here, first of all, I'm pushing you to get saved today. If you're going to cover your spouse if you're in, watch this, you're dating in here, you're going to cover your future spouse. Do it right. Many of us in here, if we be honest, we didn't do it right. We was thinking about everything else but God when we got married. But now we can tell you, we wish we would have listened to God. We wish we would have had this relationship that we had now. We wish we would have had this pie, this fire burning on the inside of us to just, just, just to say, listen, God, what do you want us to do? 
So I'm pushing anybody that's not saved today. I need everybody praying. If you are not saved today and you're in this sanctuary or you're watching online, my prayer is that you would capture this moment and don't leave this opportunity that God is releasing to you. Today, God wants you to be drawn unto him. He wants you to get connected unto him. He wants you to be a believer. He wants you to admit that you are a sinner. He wants you to believe that he died. his son Jesus died on the cross for you. And he also wants you to confess with your mouth that he is Lord, which means that you, your decisions, whatever you're looking to do, will be left up to God. You're going to let God lead you. Maybe you're in here right now. You're saying, you know what, Pastor, I'm saved. You're watching me online, I'm saved. But you probably might be saying, I need prayer. Don't wait. If you're in this sanctuary, come on up to this altar. Yeah. Come on up to this altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for your spirit. Baby, come here. Just stand right there. You can stretch your hand toward me. Deacon Hampton, Miss Hampton, if you can come on up here too, please. And you can stand behind them and just, I just need you to stretch your hand towards them. God, today, I pray for our brothers and sisters that's needing your voice. Father God, we ain't perfect, but you're more than able to deal with where we are. And God, we just want you to make us better so that we can be examples not only to each other, but we can be examples to other people and example to our children. God, I thank you for forgiving us now. Whatever shame, whatever guilt, whatever embarrassment, whatever, whatever, whatever that has been done, God, forgive us. And God, as you throw it away into the sea of forgetfulness, help us to forget that stuff so that, God, we can move forward. We want to focus on our future. So, God, I come against any satanic distractions, anything that will cause them to be reminded of their mess-ups, God. Let them walk in kingdom authority and rulership, walk in dominion. Let them walk as strong men and women, God, so that they can be used for your glory. They got lives to touch. They got people to help. They got, God, we got, we got relationships, God, that need to be mended, Father God. So, God, I ask you today, let your anointing fall fresh on them today. Destroy every yoke right now in the name of, I plead the blood of Jesus amongst them now. God, in the name of, I pray for deliverance right now, God. Move by your power and move by your spirit. You know what we needed today. So God, as we continue to sit and God, and as you continue to move amongst us, allow us the opportunity to stay communing with you, God. We can be honest and say, yes, we did it. Yes, we made a mistake. Yes, we, we intentionally did it, God. But God, you're so gracious and you're so kind. You love us so much that you want us right back in the position that we were supposed to be in. God, I thank you for your grace and your mercy. You're not like people. You're not like people that throw us away, God. God, we thank you that you accept us the way we are, but you won't allow us to stay the same. We thank you for what you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Hallelujah. Come on. Listen, I got one more thing as you're going back to your seat. If you don't have a church home and you want to be a member of this church, you want to connect with us, amen. I need you to consider this. Our push is growth. 
we got work to be done on this corner. And I'm not lying. I want, I'm telling you, if you're able to visit, I want you to think about connecting. So go home today. If you don't join with us today, go home and talk about it. I want you to consider being with us. Amen. Amen. If you are one in here and you say, well, Pastor Miles, I want to be connected. You can lift up your hands. We will accept you now. Amen. 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 We good? Amen. All hearts and minds are satisfied. We're getting ready to give. Come on. I want you to get ready to give. Listen. We're giving um, via cash out, money sign, love, PHCC, money sign, love, PHCC. Also, we're giving um, um, tithely as well. Amen. Tithely as well. Pine Hills Community Church. You can look up um, Pine Hills Community Church here in Orlando. Once again, the cash app is money sign, love, L-O-V-E, PHCC, money sign, love, PHCC. Also, I'm asking um, as well, if you want to mail your checks in, you can do that as well. We thank you so much um, for coming, um, amen, to be with us on today. I want you to pray for those who are out of town, those who are traveling. Many are traveling. They text me, and so definitely let's keep them in prayer as they're coming. Amen. Y'all can come on. Let's receive uh, the offering. Amen. Let's receive the offering. Amen. Amen. Listen, while they're getting ready and they're walking around and serving you, um, to all of our women, all of our women on Mother's Day, that Mother's Day Sunday, we're having our hats and pearls Sunday. Our hats and pearls. So we asking all the women to grab their fresh hat and their pearls. I know y'all going to make it, make it work, make it do what it do. And we want you to bring your mom um, here, um, here at the church. We got some gifts we want to give to them. We want to love on them. And so we want to prepare for Mother's Day. Men, we may be getting together. Uh, Reverend Christian may be calling you to ask you about doing some um, serving on that Sunday morning. All right, that Sunday morning. So please um, 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 put it on your calendar. Monday, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Mother's Day. Mother's Day, that Sunday, we're having uh, hats and pearls Sunday. So go ahead and be looking for that now. As well as also on May the 20th, I'm asking for all of our seniors, all of our seniors, if you are 55 and older, if you are 55 and older, I'm asking you to be with me on May 20th. We're going to get the time. We're going to uh, we're getting together on May 20th. I want to have a good time with you. I'm not going to tell you what we're going to be doing just yet, uh, but we want you to get ready. I'm wanting to spend time with all of uh, the people in our church, so we're looking at um, doing that. I've got a chance to kick it with the kids. I got a chance to kick it with our couples, and now I want to kick it with our, uh, um, our um, Wings of Faith, our seniors as well, okay? So we're going to be looking on May 20th. Get ready. We're going to have a good time. Amen. Listen, let's stretch our hand toward the offering. Lord, we thank you for the seed that have been sown. We pray that it be used for the edifying of your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If we got any visitors in here, raise your hand. Raise your hand. We got a token of appreciation. They're coming to you. They're going to put something in your hand. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you all so much for coming. This couple right here was in the front. I know them putting them on blast. They probably be like, Pastor, don't, don't, don't do that. But I got a chance to marry them. Um, um, how, how many years was that? 2017. 2017. And so they came to visit on this uh, Sunday morning. So y'all give it up for them. And once again, thank you so much for coming, sir. Thank you so much for being with us on today. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's get up out of here. I want you to enjoy, enjoy this day. I don't know if it's going to rain. And so we want to get y'all home and get y'all ready. And so I can watch the game later. Who, who your team? Who your team? For the basketball. You all, me and you always have a problem. Because, see, yeah, we always have a problem. So we'll talk. Amen. Uh, but listen, um, thank you so much for everybody coming on today. Um, and we're definitely praying. Listen, I love you guys. I'm praying for you guys. Um, I promise you there were some that said, hey, Pastor, you didn't let us know about that 5.45 a.m. prayer. It was a spontaneous thing that God put on me. I called every last one of your names in prayer. I call every last one of your names in prayer, and I'm going to continue to do it because your pastor wants the best for you. Amen. So I want to see you healthy. I want to see you living. I want to see y'all enjoying life. Amen. Amen. So let's continue to work together and pray together and do this thing called the kingdom. Amen. Come on, let's stretch our hand. Um, Lord, we thank you for this day. God, I ask God that you be with our, our family, God, and God, be with our couples on today, God. 
God, I, my prayer is for our marriages to last, that we work through all kind of transitions. God, I pray that you just continue to give them endurance, continue to allow your Holy Spirit. God, I'm asking for a refresh, to refresh relationships. Refresh relationships, God. In the name of Jesus. Now, God, I ask that your angels be encamped around our vehicles and our homes, that we may get home safely and have a good night's rest. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Make sure you love on your cousin as you're leaving. We love you. Be safe. Amen.